Greetings, friends. It is Christmas night, uh, almost midnight here in Serbia, where I'm delivering this short message. Over the last several years, uh, through Facebook and other in, uh, internet media, I've been sharing some interesting notes about the origin of Christmas customs and how we got Christmas today. Uh, in this very short message... I want to just summarize the main customs of Christmas and its origin, and I'll give a longer message, which would be, uh, is, Christi- is Christmas of pagan origin? So anyway, as far as the customs are concerned of this day, the present-day Christ- Christmas tree goes back to the worship of sacred trees in the ancient Babylonian system. The green evergreen symbolized the incarnate Baal coming to life through the incarnate baby Tammuz. The custom of decorating and worshipping trees spread throughout the known world, with the variety of tree used selected according to the natural growth of each area of the world. The Druids, for example, worshipped the oak tree, the Egyptians worshipped the palm tree, while in Rome it was the fir tree. The Yule log, the tree decorations, December 25th, Santa Claus, and making innocent children pray and write letters to him, mistletoes, All of these stem from paganism, and these are undeniable facts. Even the Catholic Encyclopedia admits it. Shunning paganism is not legalism. It is being aware of what God likes and what he hates. If we love God so much, we should seek to please him by doing the right thing, which is to have a life of purity. Now, here is a summary, which I'll refer to in uh, the longer message. The summary based on Franz Cumont's book entitled The Mysteries of Mithra. It was published in 1903. Quote, Mithra was born of a virgin in a stable on the winter solstice, frequently December 25th in the Julian calendar. The Roman Emperor or Aurelian declared December 25th to be the official birthday of Mithra, circa 270 uh, of Christ era. So, uh, Julian calendar attended by shepherds who brought gifts worshipped on Sundays, shown with a nimbus or hollow around his head, said to take a last supper with his followers when he returned to his father, believed not to have died, but to have ascended to heaven, whence it was believed he would return at the end of time to raise the dead in a physical resurrection for a final judgment, sending the good to heaven and the wicked to hell after the world has been destroyed by fire, to grant his followers immortal life, following baptism. So the followers of Mitra, as far as that is concerned, here is the summary of what we need to know. Followers of Mitra followed, they followed a leader called a Papa, a Pope, who ruled from the Vatican Hill in Rome, celebrated the atoning death of a Savior who has resurrected on a Sunday, celebrated sacraments, a consecrated meal of bread and wine, termed a Mazda, corresponding exactly to the Catholic Misa, or Mass, using chanting, bells, candles, incense, and holy water in remembrance of the Last Supper of Mithra. So that's what what the followers of Mithra were doing in the Middle East. The Emperor Constantine, who, by the way, was born in this country, in Serbia, in the town of Nish, he was a follower of Mithra to the very last of his breath, And he was the follower of Mithra until he declared December 25th the official birthday of Jesus in 313 of Christ's era. Meaning that he basically blended true Christianity with Mithraism and paganism. Now this is also crucial, and I'll refer to that in a longer message, but this is also a very crucial thing to know, that all of these customs, all of this uh, Babylonian system, all of this Christmas uh, customs and system, it all began at the Tower of Babel, about 2,200 years before the birth of our Messiah. It was with Nimrod, the grandson of Noah, and he was the one who started a cult with his mother wife Semiramis, where they offered up babies in a child mass on altars to Moloch, or Moloch, or Satan. Moloch, the cult of Satan, is uh, strictly forbidden in the Pentateuch, in the first five books of Moses. So they started that cult where they offered up babies in a child mass on altars to Moloch or Satan at the winter solstice. For each of the twelve months in the coming new year, there were twelve days of blood sacrifices that were meant to give the sun god the life force from these innocent children. By December 25th, they declared that the sun god had come back to life and called it the rebirth of the sun. When Nimrod was later executed for his crimes against children, his wife, mother, became pregnant, 
and she concocted a story in order to keep this pagan religion alive in Babylon. She told them that Nimrod had impregnated her by the rays of the sun on March 25th, the vernal equinox, Easter Sunday. Exactly nine months later, on December 25th, Semiramis gave birth to another son and she named him Tammuz. We can read in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 14, uh, how angry God was with the house of Judah for worshipping Tammuz. Semiramis then told the Babylonians that Nimrod had been reincarnated or reborn on December 25th through her newborn son Tammuz and that he was the god of the sun and she was the goddess of the moon. She continued to practice child sacrifices on the vernal equinox in remembrance of the time when she first conceived Tammuz and she taught the Babylonians to dye eggs in the blood of these infants. Semiramis was renamed Ishtar or Easter in other cultures because according to mythology she rises or resurrects in the east every spring on the vernal equinox from the underworld. And this is why the pagans continue to sacrifice infants to her on Easter Sunday. It is because the sun rises in the east and she is married to the sun god. So this is a summary of the main Christmas customs as you can see. And uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a while I'm going to record a longer message related to all of this. It's all backed up by... Uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia is all backed up by the scientific research. That Christmas, those are undeniable facts and you for yourself are free, you have free will to judge whether Christmas of, of, is of pagan origin or not. And you can judge for yourself uh, whether Christmas has anything to do with the birth of our Lord and Messiah Jesus Christ.